Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video, while we wait to decide if Boris Johnson is insane enough to trigger Article 16 against the combined threats of retaliation from both the EU and the US, I'd like to take a look at how Northern Irish Unionists are viewing the situation. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I record this thinking to myself, for all I know, before it gets published, Boris Johnson will have triggered Article 16. Um, but I sort of suspect not after what happened earlier this week, but we will see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the uh, the point of view of, I suppose, the DUP a little bit, which is the ultra-conservative unionists who are currently the largest unionist party in both Westminster and Stormont. As such, we tend to talk a lot about them. But also the UUP, who uh, are a little more pragmatic. Not really, by and large, relishing the unilateral suspension of the protocol. Now, the DUP's position is well established by now. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, the party's third leader this year, has stated that he wants the protocol completely removed. What would you like in its place then? Uh, there's no suggestion for what should replace it. But this is the leader of a party of, of, of people who think that the earth is 6,000 years old. So I suppose logic and cause and effect are not exactly top of their priority list. Donaldson has threatened to collapse the Stormont Assembly if he doesn't get his way, though he has yet to do so. Possibly because he expects Johnson to suspend the offending parts of the protocol so he doesn't think it'll be necessary, or possibly because he's bluffing. I don't know, um, and I'm not sure at which point Donaldson has to arrive at the conclusion that Johnson is not going to suspend the protocol, assuming that he doesn't, because we still don't know whether he will or he won't. Um, Donaldson has been threatening reprisals if things aren't done in a matter of weeks. Oh, uh, yeah, if this isn't done, then in a few weeks I'm going to do this. The thing is, he's been saying this for months now. But on the other side of unionism, the more moderate UUP seem to have a different view. But it does get complicated. Um, they don't like the protocol either. <laughs> you know, the UUP's Brexit position has changed. It did initially oppose Brexit, to be fair. So unlike the DUP, who have only reaped what they sow, the UUP argued against leaving the EU during the 2016 referendum. But they switched to being in favour of Brexit after the referendum. But they weren't a hard Brexit party, even though they abandoned their position of remain. Their policy was to prioritise the union, including over Brexit. It's like if you can't come up with a form of Brexit that preserves the unionism or what unionism needs to exist, then we'd rather not leave the EU. So basically a soft Brexit party, basically. They had a formal policy of preferring to remain in the EU rather than support Boris Johnson's withdrawal agreement, including the Northern Ireland Protocol. As such, this party has got every right to attack the Northern Ireland Protocol, unlike the DUP, but they haven't generally speaking, favoured its removal with nothing to replace it. They've been a bit more, uh, or at least they didn't, they've been a bit more uh, realistic. You know, the latest leader of the UUP said earlier this year, when they took up their position, the protocol is here to stay. What they've been wanting are solutions that meet the needs of the protocol without the damage to unionism that Brexit is perceived to be causing. It is amazing the difference it makes to your outlook on politics when you accept that dinosaurs were a thing. Not that anything is ever simple in Northern Irish politics, where identity often trumps pragmatism. In September, with protocol tensions rising, they did put their names to a letter labelling the protocol as being in breach of the core guarantees of the Good Friday Agreement. In other words, the protocol is the problem, we need to remove the protocol. Of course, the issue here is that it is Brexit that did this, not the protocol. As I've pointed out before, it's not the protocol that erected checks on goods passing from Britain to Northern Ireland, it is Brexit. Actually, even that's not quite true, it was leaving the customs union a single market. I've said it before, we had the protocol in place last year, 2020 the protocol was in place. We didn't have any of these problems because we were still in the customs union a single market. It's only a problem in 2021 because we left those. If we were to rejoin the customs union and single market, all of the problems that people blame on the protocol would disappear overnight. And yet the protocol would still exist. So really what unionists should be arguing for is for the UK as a whole 
to return to that customs union and single market. So why don't they? Well, at least the UUP, uh, who had appeared you know, much more realistic, I think part of the problem, I suspect, is one, they are genuinely split on Brexit. I don't know that it's necessarily straight down the middle, but although the party was formerly a Remain party for the referendum, there were also a fair number of members who wanted to leave. I mean, let us remember that the Conservative Party leadership campaigned to remain in 2016. I mean, you look at how far the Tories have shifted from this position. All of their previous leaders have been pro-European. They've wanted us to be part of the European project from when we entered to, we to, well, just before we left. You know, look at the shift in the Conservative Party over the last five years. And of course, you could imagine that another party with a split membership on the issue could easily travel the same way. But I suspect the main problem is that doing that is arguing for return to the customs union single market uh, for others. You know, it's, it's a vaguely ridiculous position for a Northern Irish policy, uh, politician to adopt because Northern Ireland is already in the customs union and it already has access to the single market. What they're actually arguing for is for everywhere except Northern Ireland to return because Northern Ireland never left. You know, imagine a, an English MP arguing for Scotland to do a thing that, that doesn't include England doing the same thing or a Scottish MP arguing for Wales to do a thing that doesn't also include Scotland. It would be bizarre to say the least. So this is the problem that the UUP have. They are more pragmatic than the DUP. They backed Remain in 2016 because they saw the danger. And even when they said that they would get behind leaving the EU, they still backed remaining in the EU over Boris Johnson's withdrawal agreement. They don't have to accept any ownership of the way that Brexit impacted Northern Ireland because that's a big problem for other groups. There are people and groups who supported Brexit and now that they can see the damage that Brexit's doing, it's like too much of an assault on their ego to, to have to admit their mistake. The UUP didn't make that mistake. They can stand to one side and say, we warn people about this crap. We bear no responsibility for it. And yet they're still trapped. The protocol has been hyped as this anti-unionist device. It is a fact that no matter how much smoothing over of the protocol is managed, it will mean a customs border between Britain and Northern Ireland. doesn't matter how many solutions you come to reduce the need for those checks, they're going to exist in some form. Really is this simple. Where you've got two different customs territories, you will have a customs border. Where you have two different regulatory territories, you will have a standards border. Northern Ireland no longer shares its customs or standards with Britain, but it does with the EU. So, as a result of that, there's no customs or standards border with the Republic of Ireland, but there is with Britain. And, and that is how it will remain. Boris Johnson may suspend the operation of that border, but he cannot sustain that policy for long. Against economic sanctions from countries representing well over half of our total trade, we cannot possibly manage. If significant sections of the protocol are suspended, for all the cheering from some unionists, it will be short-lived because the protocol is here to stay until one of two things happens. Firstly, Britain rejoins the customs union and single market. Or second, Ireland reunifies. Although the second one would render the protocol unnecessary, the effects of the protocol would however remain because that is that the customs and standards border would still remain in exactly the same place as it is now. Only that border would actually harden because the protocol softens the border. There's things allowed through there that wouldn't be allowed through if Ireland, if Ireland reunified. So pragma pragmatic unionists would be in favour of the first option. That is that Britain rejoins. But like I said, it probably feels bizarre to call for it. With the second option, their core aim ceases to exist. It is the worst of all outcomes for them. But those are the only two options to resolve the problems that they mistakenly applied to the protocol. Another thing to consider is that the protocol does not actually signal the death knell of unionism as some would suggest. See, <clears throat> it does make reunification more likely and, and, and if it's already very likely as I've thought it has been for many years, it potentially hastens it up. But the way Brexit has worked out you know, we have already seen Northern Irish supply chains moving more towards the EU, including the Republic of Ireland, of course, and less away from Britain. 
inevitable consequences of trade barriers being erected with Britain that don't exist elsewhere. And that's for goods. Like for services though, Northern Ireland is still largely in the same boat as the rest of the UK. So it's very much split around goods and services. But again, that's Brexit, not the protocol. What the protocol has brought is more export opportunities for Northern Ireland. It's actually been good for business on balance. Businesses in Northern Ireland can export to Britain without any hassle. The same is not true of EU countries. Northern Ireland can also export to the EU without any hassle. The same is not true of Britain anymore. Northern Ireland is uniquely placed to be able to export goods to its immediate neighbours without trade barriers. This is entirely beneficial and is reflected in their export growth this year. The irony, as I see it, is that if unionism generally sees the protocol as being an existential threat to them, it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because instead of their cause being for Northern Ireland to remain part of the UK, they will become defined as being in opposition to a mechanism that has to remain in place for the foreseeable future. So then all they're going to do is get other people to see, for unionism to succeed, the protocol has to go. Then people go, but the protocol can't go. Therefore, what you're saying is unionism, unionism has to go. You create a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like I say, if Northern Ireland is to remain part of the UK, the only way to deal with the perceived problems of the protocol is for the rest of the UK to have the same level of alignment with the EU that Northern Ireland has. Now that will happen. That's got to happen at some point, but not until the Conservatives have been removed from power. And even then it will take time. You know, we could be talking another 10 years if things go well. I hope sooner, but that's, we could easily be talking that long. Unionists cannot possibly remain relevant if they try to suspend a whole decade raging against a fact of life. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.